topic 6.5 to 6.6, .6, Regulation of Gene Expression, Part 1, Operons. Here are some of the questions we'll be addressing. What are operons? What's the difference between an inducible and a repressible operon? How does the trip operon work? Explain how the LAC operon works. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. Let's start with a little context. E. coli is a bacterial cell that lives in our colons. That coli is related to colon, and it also lives in the colons of many other animals. The colon is the large intestine. E. coli has about 4,000 genes. This is a chromosome map of E. coli's chromosome, and it shows a small portion of these 4,000 genes, which code for a variety of proteins. The overall genome of E. coli consists of about 4 million base pairs, A, T's, C's, and G's. And this leads to a question of regulation, which is what's the control system for turning its genes on and off? Let's start by responding to this very general question, what is an operon? One definition is that an operon is a cluster of genes transcribed as a single RNA. Here we have a portion of DNA that's labeled structural genes. And it's all transcribed as one RNA transcript, but then that RNA is processed so that it's producing a variety of enzymes. A cluster of genes transcribed as a single RNA. But our focus in AP Biology is that an operon is a mostly prokaryotic system of gene regulation that has control elements that allow for gene regulation. Describe the structure of an operon. Here we see a string of DNA, and it's an operon. It consists of structural genes, and those are genes that code for protein. There's an operator, which is where a repressor protein binds, and that enables this system to be regulated. There's a promoter where RNA polymerase binds. And there's a regulatory gene that produces the regulatory protein. That regulatory protein is generally a repressor protein that binds at the operator. How does the trip operon work? The trip operon is a system that codes for a series of enzymes that make tryptophan. That's what the structural genes do. These enzymes work as part of a metabolic pathway that codes for tryptophan, which is one of the 20 amino acids. But it's also a regulatory system that only turns on production of these enzymes at certain moments. If there's no tryptophan in the environment, then the regulatory protein over here, which is produced by the regulatory gene, and that's pretty much always on, that can't bind with the operator. Look at the shape of this regulatory protein over here, and notice that this part won't bind with this. And really what we're talking about is a protein with a complex shape that can actually bind with a sequence of DNA, because that's what the operator is, it's DNA. That means that RNA polymerase can bind at the promoter, and it can roll down the length of the gene and transcribe the structural genes, creating these enzymes. When tryptophan is in E. coli's environment, that tryptophan, the amino acid, will diffuse into the cell. What will happen? When tryptophan is in the cell's environment, then what will happen is it will bind with the repressor protein. And when it does, that will cause the repressor protein to change shape. Think of this like an enzyme that's doing an allosteric shift. Binding over here causes a chain over here. How and why? This is a protein that has alpha helices and pleated sheets, and it's very dynamic. So the binding over here causes a change over here. That enables this regulatory protein, a repressor, to bind with the operator. When it does, it blocks RNA polymerase. 
That means that RNA polymerase can no longer transcribe these structural genes to make enzymes that synthesize tryptophan. That makes a lot of sense. The basic rule is if tryptophan is present, don't make it. It's an adaptation for saving energy. TRYP is therefore called a repressible operon, and tryptophan is the co-repressor. This protein, when it binds with tryptophan, blocks the operator, repressing the system. Transcription becomes impossible. That's the TRYP operon. How does the LAC operon work? We just looked at the TRYP operon, which controls the synthesis of enzymes for synthesizing tryptophan. What about this LAC operon? The LAC operon is an inducible operon, as opposed to TRYP, which was a repressible one. And it codes for enzymes that digest lactose, a disaccharide. So here's lactose. You can see it's composed of two sugar monomers. And the enzymes that digest lactose will break it down into glucose and galactose. What happens when lactose is in the environment? Remember, these bacteria live inside our guts. So if you had E. coli in your gut and you drank a glass of milk, the sugar in the milk, which is lactose, would then be in the environment of E. coli. That lactose will diffuse into E. coli. Once lactose is inside E. coli, it binds with a repressor protein. Here's lactose. It's binding with a repressor protein. And notice the effect. In this case, the lactose causes the repressor protein to change shape so it can't bind with the operator. That keeps the operator free. And when RNA polymerase binds at the promoter, it can roll down the length of the operon. It can transcribe the structural genes. And the structural genes produce enzymes that break down lactose into monosaccharides and also increase the permeability of E. coli cell membrane so that more lactose can enter. When lactose is absent, however, there's no lactose available to bind with the repressor. The repressor's default shape lets it bind with the operator. RNA polymerase, therefore, after binding with the promoter, can't transcribe the structural genes. The rule is if lactose is absent, don't make genes to digest it. Again, think of this as a metabolic adaptation. This saves energy. Don't make enzymes to digest something when the thing that you're digesting isn't around. LAC is therefore an inducible operon. It can be induced to be turned on. What turns it on? Lactose. Lactose is the inducer. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. It's a hard course, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. The LAC operon is a negative feedback system. Explain. Think about how the LAC operon works. Lactose turns the system on. Turning the system on removes lactose from the system. Why? Because turning the system on, allowing RNA polymerase to transcribe these genes, allows for the production of enzymes and proteins that enhance lactose digestion. That enhanced lactose digestion will make all of this lactose go away. When all of this lactose goes away, there'll be no more lactose to bind with the repressor, which will then bind with the operator. The result is that the system turns off, and that's negative feedback, where the output of the system has the effect of quieting or repressing the system. You can say the same thing about the TRIP operon. It's also a negative feedback system. Why? The absence of tryptophan starts transcription. When tryptophan is not in the environment, then the regulatory protein can't bind with the operator. That enables RNA polymerase to transcribe these structural genes producing these enzymes that are part of the metabolic pathway to produce tryptophan. That produces tryptophan, and the production of tryptophan 
puts tryptophan at high enough concentration in the cell so that it binds with the repressor protein, changing its shape, allowing the repressor protein to bind at the operator, shutting down transcription. That turns the system off. That's also negative feedback. Both TRIP and LAC, negative feedback systems, even though LAC is an inducible system and TRIP is a repressible system. The graph below shows the growth of an E. coli culture that's fed with both glucose and lactose. X and Y show the glucose and lactose concentrations. So note how the glucose concentration is going down over here, and notice that the lactose concentration maintains itself and then goes down over here. The red line shows the growth of the bacteria over nine hours. There are two lags in growth. One is at B over here between A and C, and the other one is here at D. What's happening? E. coli prefers to metabolize glucose. Why? Because glucose is a monosaccharide, lactose is a disaccharide, and as you know, glucose is the fuel that goes right into the glycolysis process that begins cellular respiration. Now, up to point A, E. coli eats glucose and grows rapidly, but then the glucose starts to run out. As the glucose starts to run out, there's a lag in growth during activation of the LAC operon and lactose digesting enzymes. From C to D, the LAC operon is churning out those enzymes that break down lactose into glucose and galactose. But at a certain point, lactose runs out and then there's another lag, which might be a permanent lag, until another food source is introduced into the culture. The key idea is that glucose is easier to digest than lactose. Glucose will be metabolized, it'll be digested first, followed by lactose. There was a graph like this that was an FRQ on one of the previous tests. And this is why you have to understand operons in order to succeed in AP biology. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.